Welcome to worship here at Resurrection. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter, and we also celebrate Memorial Day, uh, Memorial Day weekend. So I hope that you're keeping safe. I hope you're encouraged during this time. Uh, we have a few uh, prayer uh, things to add to our prayer list today. First of all, let's add Angelica Domsky's uh, brother and sister-in-law who suffered a fall. Um, let's also keep in our prayers uh, the family and friends of Martha Hinckley, who has passed from this life to the next. Also, you'll be happy to know that our congregation has a reopening task force, and they have begun to work on when we can get together again in person safely. I hope that day is soon, but we want to err on the side of safety. So I'm so glad you're with us for worship today. Let's begin with the confession and forgiveness of sins. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is part of the introduction to the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with his disciples on the eve of his ascension, in which he promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. First reading from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heavenly, heaven. Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upward towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount they called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John, and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God arise, and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and joyous before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God. In the ancient heavens, you send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel. Give strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, imagine this. You're in an unfamiliar city, a big city, and you're on the highway. It's eight lanes of traffic, and you know that your exit is coming up soon, but you're not quite sure. By the time you realize you've passed it, and you're so frustrated and so upset. You know you have to go further, you have to get over, you have to turn around and try to get back on track. Why are you so upset? Because you're outside your comfort zone. You don't know what to expect next. And that's what Jesus does to our disciples in the lesson today. As he is preparing to ascend back to the Father, he sends them out beyond their comfort zone. In the passage today uh, that we heard Sue read, uh, it talks about how after Jesus is taken up in the clouds, they're looking up into heaven. Think about it. They've been with this teacher for three whole years. What do we do next? And you know, I'll be honest, I think sometimes in our practice of faith, we tend to look up a lot. We're giving glory to God. That's a great thing. God deserves our adoration. 
But we also need to be looking around. We need to be looking around at those in our lives who need to hear the good news that we've heard. We need to be ready to look around and to encounter the folks that need this message the most. I think sometimes we can start to think that we're more uh, consumers of Christianity than distributors. But Jesus ends that with five little words. He says, you are my witnesses. We are Jesus' witnesses in this world, along with his first followers. You are my witnesses. And we talk a lot here at Resurrection about our faith story, knowing our faith story. What was that like for you? Were you always in the church? Were you someone who came to faith as a teenager, maybe at a church camp? Were you someone who came to faith as an adult? How has God led you? How have you gone through trials and heartaches? How have you used your skills and your blessings to build the life that you have? How is Christ a part of that life? Are you ready to share that story? Well, you know, the truth is we don't share it very much. And I think there's three main reasons for that. The first reason we don't share it is because, frankly, it doesn't come up very much. You know, you're there in your life and you're trying to make ends meet and you're trying to get through this pandemic, you're trying to help your family, and you don't really think too much about the ocean of grace that you swim in every day. You don't think about those baptismal waters where you were forgiven and where you were given the promise of life now and to eternity. It just doesn't come up. I think a second reason that we don't share our faith is that it's outside our comfort zone. It's scary to think that we might share our faith with another person. I mean, what am I going to say? And then I think the last reason we don't is we, we don't want to be, be politically incorrect. You know, we, we think, well, everybody comes from a faith background probably, and who am I to try to influence that? But the truth of the matter is that many people around you are searching for what you've heard. They're searching for the fellowship and the hope that you have. And you are the perfect one to share it with them. You will be my witnesses, Jesus says in the lesson today from Acts chapter 1. And Jesus luckily uh, takes it step by step with his apostles. He says, first I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem. We have to remember that's where they were staying in the upper room. So they go back to their friends and they say, oh my gosh, we just watched the Lord ascend into heaven. And they share that witness and that story. Then Jesus says, you're going to be my witnesses in Judea. Well, Judea was the wider area, not just the city. We might think about it as our city or town. And then he says to the Samaritans. Now, we're actually to Samaria. And remember, the Samaritans were the enemies of the Jews. So what Jesus is saying is even to the enemies in your life, the people you can't get along with, you will be my witnesses. And then he says this, to the ends of the earth. Now, is that even possible? We can't even get on a, an airplane right now. But we do have a way to share our witness to the ends of the earth, and that's through the Internet. Think about this for a moment. How many friends do you have on Facebook? I know I have hundreds. I bet you do too. I wonder how many friends we have on Facebook combined. Now, some of those people are very happy with their church and their faith, and that's great. But I bet there has to be some percentage who are searching for a faith that's not built on guilt, a faith that's not built on fear, but built on the love of Jesus Christ and the salvation he gives freely to anyone who looks to him. These people are hungry to hear the word. And maybe one of the best ways that you can share your witness right now is to share this service with your friends on Facebook. Share it with them. Get that message out. And you know, before you start sharing your witness, whether it's in person or online, we want to think about what those first disciples did to get ready. And the first thing they did is they prayed. We hear that they went back and were constantly in prayer. That's something that's so important. You know, if you do action without prayer, that's like planting seeds in the desert. How do you expect them to grow? You need that power of God. You need uh, the, the, the rain coming down on them of God's grace that that seed can sprout and grow. And that's what you need to do. You need to start with prayer. And I know it's not easy. We're all very busy. We're all running around trying to get things done. And that's where you need to be creative. I heard a great story 
about a businessman from the middle of the last century. His name was J. Arthur Rank, and he was very wealthy. And he had in his office, he had an elevator that went up to his office. But he never took it. He always took what he called the prayer stairs. He would go up those stairs in the morning, lifting up his concerns to God, giving over the day to God. And then at the end of his day, he would go down those stairs, thanking God for what he had done and leaving his concerns there in God's hands so that he would not take them home to his family. He carved out a time for prayer in his life. And so what you and I want to do is we want to say to God in prayer, I know there's people who need this message and I want you to lead me to them. I want you to help me plant the seed so that it can grow and bring them new life. I'll tell you when you do that it'll work. I want to share with you the experience I had about 15 years ago. I was a chaplain uh, to the 4th Assault Amphibian Battalion. It's over in Tampa. That's where they're based. And we were out in San Diego. We were out at Camp Pendleton for annual training. Well, the guys that I was ministering to are the ones who drive those amphibious craft. You know the ones they have got uh, treads on the side like a tank. They've got a ramp that comes down in the back to let out the troops that are inside. And they have turrets on the top with guns. And so what they were doing there at Pendleton, they had all these tractors, that's what they called them, lined up in a row, back to back. And they had their ramps down. And it was kind of like a corridor that I could walk down as their chaplain. And I remember every day, I didn't have enough time to go to every one. There's no way. But I would say, God, please lead me to the crew that needs me today. Lead me, O Lord, to those who need me. I remember one day I was walking along, and I heard the clanking of tools coming from one of these tractors. And the guy was down in the engine department. He was just, he was cursing a blue streak, and he sounded so angry. And I'll be honest, I was a little intimidated going up there. But I went up to him and said, hey, this is, this is Chaplain Bergstrom. So how's it going? He, he apologized. He said, oh, chaps. He said, I'm glad you stopped by. Because before I came on this annual training, my wife and I had been having some problems in our marriage. And I want to talk to you about it. And so we sat there for a good 20 minutes in the back of that amphibious craft and talked and prayed. God will lead you where you need to go. And that leads to the second thing. The second thing is that you need to go. You need to let the fire in your heart melt the lead in your feet. I know it's outside your comfort zone. I know that it's, it's hard to go up and, and into a situation, but you just need to be present. You need to be there. Have you heard about these principles? These high school principles for the class of 2020. And they're going around and they're going to each home of each graduate. And they're showing up in their car and they're congratulating those children in person. I think that's just an amazing thing. Presence is so powerful. And if you think about Jesus, Jesus was always going to where people were. Jesus didn't wait in the synagogue for people to show up. No, Jesus went down by the Sea of Galilee where the fishermen were cleaning their nets. He was on the road from one place to another. He was in the marketplace. He was in the fields. He was in private homes. Jesus was with the people. He went. And he even went to his enemies. I just finished a really good video series called The Chosen. And I have to be honest, I didn't like the first episode. I had problems with it. But I'm so glad I kept watching. Because all of the rest presented Jesus just as I would imagine him being uh, when he was walking this earth. And the last episode that I saw was about Jesus encountering the woman at the well. Remember this, a Samaritan woman? And by the time he's done talking to her, she's running excitedly back to her village to tell everybody that she's found the Messiah. Well, as she had said to Jesus just a little while before, she said, you know, Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Well, they will now. And the last scene in this, this show was Jesus and his disciples walking down this road with music in the background to go amongst their enemies. You talk about going outside your comfort zones. Jesus went. Did you know that it's estimated that Jesus walked over 3,000 miles in his three-year ministry. That is truly amazing. Jesus went to where the people were. And when you go, you have the chance to minister. I want to share with you something from uh, Kelly Clark. She's an Olympic snowboarder. And you may remember back in 2002 at the Winter Olympics, she won the gold medal in the halfpipe. And Kelly, nowadays, she goes around and it's more about marketing. But I want you to see 
I want you to listen to what she says about sharing her faith. Here's a quote from her. She says, my ministry and what God is doing in my life is really found in my career in the marketplace. I'm in an industry where it's very foreign and very countercultural. She's talking about being a Christian there. I get to love these people really well who would never step foot in a church. Now, I want you to notice what she said. She didn't say I get to preach to them or make them uncomfortable. She, get, I, she said I get to love them very well. And that's what you and I are supposed to do. We're supposed to pray about where to go. We're supposed to show up with love and compassion and authenticity. And then that leads to the third thing. We trust God's power to do the rest. We've got to stop obsessing about the fact that we're just not worthy, that we're not ready. I have people say to me all the time, they say, I don't have the right personality. I don't have the, the biblical knowledge. I don't have the most exciting faith story. Well, what's wrong with those statements? It's the personal pronoun I, because it's not about you. It's about God's power. If you look through the Bible carefully, you'll see that God uses very unlikely characters to be his witnesses, and he wants you to be his witness as well. I mean, the truth of the matter is that you can relate to people better than I can, at least some people, because you have to think about your unique story and your unique gifts, and the circles that you run in. I mean, think about this. Are you an engineer? Engineers have a certain way of thinking, a certain way of speaking. How can you use that language to tell about your faith? Or maybe you're an entrepreneur. What does that mean? How does that relate to living with strength, and living with boldness and courage? How can you use your language of faith to help others? It's a great question today. And I know it's not going to be easy. I've been a pastor for over 30 years, and I still have a difficult pe time talking to people about my faith. But you have to remember, it's not about your personal performance. It's about God's power in your presence and what you're going to share. I want to share with you a neat story from a woman named Dale Burke. She wrote a book in which she told uh, the story of being at a conference. And she was there with a friend named Bruce. And they were getting a ride back to the airport. And a friend that I, they had just made at the conference said, hey, can I share your ride? And they said, sure, come along. Well, as they're riding toward the airport, Bruce says to this man, he says, well, he says, who do you work for? And the man gave the name of a Christian organization. And Bruce was like, oh, wow. He said, uh, that's how I came to faith. He said, back in 1972, I attended one of your conferences. And he said, it changed my life. And I went home, and I, I, I shared it with my sister and with my brother, and now all three of us, are professionals in, professionals in ministry. He said, I'm a publisher, my sister's an overseas missionary, and my brother is, an, is a Christian author. All because of that conference. And the man sat there silently for a while. And then he said, I led that conference back in 1972. It was the first time I'd ever done that. And I felt like I really messed it up. I forgot parts of my lecture. I didn't get the schedule right. I, up to this moment, I thought that was one of the greatest failures of my life. But now listening to you, I realize that it's one of the greatest things I've ever done. You will be my witnesses, Jesus says. That's what today's about. He ascends into heaven, but he gives us a job. And before we go and do that job, whether online or in person, before we do it, we need to pray. We need to pray that God will guide us to the right place. Pray that God will give growth to the seeds that we plant. And then we need to just go. I know it's not comfortable. I know it's outside your comfort zone. But go and be with the people who need you and find natural ways led by God to share your faith in Jesus. And then finally, remember. Remember it's not about your performance. It's about God's power. So the thing to do, instead of just looking up, which is great, praise God, but look around and say, Lord, lead me to those who need me. Amen. <laughs>
Let us now profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today our theme has been love, and love is shown in many ways. It's shown by a service member who gives their life for their country. That's the greatest sign, perhaps. It's also shown in the way that we love one another um, as we share our witness to Christ with those who really need it and are looking for hope and encouragement in their life. And we also share our love through the offering. I want to thank you. Your offerings continue to come in. You're helping us to keep this church strong. The lights have been restored. The pews have been restored. And even today, the water's back on. So we're ready for you to come home. But let's continue to support the church we love and to give thanks to God through our offering. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Living God, you chose us to be your witnesses in the world. Give us the courage to do so. Help us, Lord, to reach out trusting your power, leading your children home to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, today we remember those who have given their lives for this country that we love. We thank you, Lord, for their sacrifice, and we will never forget them. Lord, be with us this weekend. Keep us safe as things continue to open up more. Lord, help us to be loving to those around us by keeping our distance. Lord, we pray in your power that this virus would be managed. We pray that answers would be found. But in the meantime, Lord, help us to love others by being careful towards them. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you come to us in time of need. You heal us in time of sickness and give us peace even in the face of death. Lord, we remember before you Martha Hinckley. We pray for her family and friends and we know that she is in your presence. Lord, thank you for the hope we have in the resurrection, the new life, the strength for living that you've given us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we also remember all who are ill among us. We lift up to you those on our prayer list. We also ask you, Father, to be with Angelica's brother and sister-in-law as they recover from that fall. Lord, strengthen them. We also pray, Heavenly Father, in this time of silence for those in our own lives in need of healing. in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.